Good morning and welcome to our Easter service, jointly hosted by St. Michael's Church in Holliston and St. Andrew's Church in Wellesley. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Wait, are you meant to say both those parts? Uh, no, um, no, I guess you're right. The tradition is that at the beginning of an Easter service, the clergy person says, Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Alleluia. Which is how the congregation responds. I'm Adrian Robbins Cole, the rector of St. Andrew's Church in Wellesley. And I'm Sarah Robbins Cole, the rector of St. Michael's in Holliston. And now the other clergy who are going to be helping to lead the service are going to greet you as well. I'm the Reverend Margaret Schwartzer, the Associate Rector at St. Andrews. Happy Easter, St. Andrews. Happy Easter, St. Michael's. Good morning and happy Easter from St. Andrews. Um, garden courtyard. My name is Mia Kano. I'm the assistant rector for youth and families here at St. Andrews. This wasn't how I pictured spending my first Easter here, but I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so glad you are here. And I'm beyond joyful that Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, is here in the midst of us as well. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 to 6. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion, unto the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. There is a sound exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the Lord's doing and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory.
reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. They came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading. Adrian, what's your Easter message today? I have a kind of couple of thoughts. Okay. Um, should I share those? Sure. Okay. So um, my first thought is uh, that, you know, I, while I really appreciate um, the metaphors that people sometimes use to describe Easter, like it's like a, a plant shooting out of a bulb out of, out of the dead of winter at springtime and, and the idea of the seasons and renewal. I mean, I think those are interesting metaphors and they help us understand Easter. Um, I have to say that Easter is about saying far more than just that, those kind of metaphors. And it refers to something, you know, really real to me. And, you know, that is the, you know, the resurrection of Christ, which I you know, really believe is the heart of my faith and the heart of our Christian faith, that there is life beyond this life. And, you know, I feel like that's a, such a, a kind of an apt message for for this time when we're fo- facing this coronavirus that that you know in the end what our faith teaches us that that disease and illness and evil never have the last word and that, that it's Christ the power of Christ's love and the resurrection and God's eternity that have the ultimate word and that you know gives me real hope um, at this time. Um, do, you, I, do you have a second thought? Yeah. I only have one, so you okay. might as well All right. go. Okay. Um, my second thought is that, you know, during this um, this time when we've been confined to our, our houses in order to kind of defeat this coronavirus, it's really made me think about um, the importance of, of confinement in the lives of a number of really um, key Christian figures in our history um, and how important that's been to them in their spiritual development. I'm thinking of um, people like St. Francis of Assisi, um, St. Ignatius of Loyola, who was the founder of the Jesuit movement. And then, you know, in more modern times, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the, the Christian uh, German pastor who was imprisoned by, by Hitler and eventually executed uh, in a concentration camp. And, you know, the, the thing about, about um, these people was that their time of confinement changed them. The, um, both um, St. Francis and St. Ignatius were both soldiers and they were captured in POW camps. And it was during that time that, that they experienced uh, life transforming conversions. They, they met Christ and their lives changed forever and became the great figures we know them to be. And, you know, when I think about um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, there are a couple of remarkable things about him. Um, you know, firstly, you know, just before he was, well, one, when he was just being taken away for execution, after he'd celebrated the Eucharist, um, he said to one of his fellow prisoners as he passed him, as he was being led out, uh, by the guards, you know, this is the end, but for me, this is the beginning, mm-hmm. that real faith in the power of the resurrection. But also Bonhoeffer in his famous letters from prison said something really important about Easter itself. He said, I wish only that people lived as if Easter were real. And by what I think he meant by that was that he said that if we can live as Christians who have real faith in the power of the resurrection, then we can live without fear and we can you know, be the people God wishes us to be, people of love and, and care and generosity. So those are my Easter thoughts. Yeah, very different from my Easter thoughts. I 
But I'm glad. I'm glad we have different yeah, thoughts. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing. So I'm going to angle everyone towards me for a moment. Okay. So, um, well, let me tell you what I'm thinking yeah. about. So just before we ended out in our homes, and it's um, been a few weeks now we've been home, I ordered some books from the library, and I got three books on visible mending. And I've been very interested in visible mending. I am not a person who sews for, at all, really, but I've been fascinated by it. Um, and so visible mending, if you're not familiar with it, is a way of mending where you don't try to hide the holes in your garments. You actually uh, decorate them, and um, it becomes sort of ornamental the way you oh. mend things. So earlier today, literally, I... I took out this sweater that I love that my mother gave to me, but it developed a hole really early on in its life. And so I mended it with this um, sort of magenta, magenta thread. So it's right in the middle of the back. It looks really pretty. Oh, it's it's very nice. And then I mended one of the underarm places over here uh, with what looks like an eyelet, which is one of the other ways of mending. You can darn as well. There are all That's sorts of methods. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I've been wearing Will's sweater that he wore when he was at school. It even has the name tag still in it. Um, I did stitch those. Uh, so this is his, but it developed three holes in it over the last few years. And then today I thought I would try those holes. So I mended there and down at the bottom. And then this the big hole in the underarm needed more stitches. So it's... Um, Bright, it's really cool. I know, Kermit <laughs> color. It's kind of Kermit color. Um, but it occurred to me as we were preparing for this service that um, one of the things that we learn about Jesus during Holy Week and Easter is that Jesus came to mend our lives and amend our lives. And um, and when Jesus mends us, we aren't the same person we were oh, okay. before. We aren't restored into. The person before we are restored into a new stronger more beautiful in fact way so when jesus died on the cross and was resurrected and promised to us that we could be forgiven that we are loved that death never has the last word that promise of restoration makes us stronger and more beautiful and that's my thought for the day God, I really like your stuff, but I think it's better than mine. I think I'm going to come to your church. Oh, good. Yeah. Excellent. So I'll, I'll be there next Easter. Okay, and maybe awesome. you can come and, or maybe you should come and preach at my church. Oh, good. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be not at home anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Amen. Amen. This is Easter Day, and we are Easter people. I invite us to stand and affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. The creed is found on page 358 in our Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Please join me in saying the entire response to each prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity, 
saying, Jesus, Lord of life, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. At this time of global pandemic, we pray for all leaders of our nations that they may have courage, wisdom, and a spirit of cooperation to defeat the ravages of the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all whom we know and love, both near and far. May their eyes be open to see the glory of the risen Lord. We also remember all those who are fighting the coronavirus on our behalf. Doctors, nurses, hospital workers, and emergency workers. We also remember those providing essential services, grocery store workers, utility workers, and many more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish. Grant them the faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of resurrection. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you have given us the victory over evil and death through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We now come to the peace, which is a part of the service where we share peace with one another. Christ told us that we should live at peace with one another as well as love each other. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us share, Son of Christ, peace with one another. Alleluia. Alleluia. Give praise to the risen Lord. Alleluia. So now we come to our, the part of our service in which we're going to share our bread and wine together. Um, this isn't a formal Eucharist because um, the bishops have said we can't consecrate bread and wine over the airwaves. But instead, we're having what is called an agape meal. Agape is from the Greek word meaning love. And it's a reminder of those early meals that Christians had together um, as they remembered the Last Supper. And so we're going to do this together. We're going to say Sarah and I are going to say some words of, of blessing over our bread and wine. And then at the end of those prayers, we're going to uh, together in our homes separately, physically, but spiritually together, we're going to consume our bread and, and, our, and our cup or whatever it is, whatever elements you have with you. And so um, Sarah's going to start our agape prayer of blessing. In fact, I'm going to start it. God, you made us and the world and everything in it. All the good we see comes from you. You have always loved us, but people have not always loved you. You sent Jesus to show us how to live and how to love and to bring us back to you again. He died for us on the cross so that through your spirit, we can all be your people. And so with thanks, we praise you. We are here because on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. There he took some bread and gave thanks to God. He broke the bread into pieces and gave it to them and said, this is my body. Do this and know that I am with you. Later, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God. He shared it with them and said, this is my blood 
which brings new life. Do this and know that I am with you. And so remembering Jesus who died and who was raised to new life by God and is alive forever, we are glad to share that life and live in him. Help us care for your world and for each other in the way that Jesus showed us. Until he comes again with all your people in every time and every land. And now let's continue by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now share the bread and the cup. I come with joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free. In and wonder to recall his life laid down for me. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share each proud division ends, that love that made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends. Together met, together bound, we'll go our different ways. And as his people in the world, we'll live and speak his praise. So now that we've... Um shared our, our common meal together, um, we're going to say a prayer um, to thank God for being among us. So Sarah and I are going to say this prayer together. It's called this Prayer of St. Chrysostom. It's a much-loved prayer from the, in the prayer book. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you, you have, have given, given us grace at this time, time with, with one accord, accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. come to our final blessing. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And I want to wish you a really happy Easter and for every blessing for you on this day of resurrection, a day of, of new life and, and new hope. Amen. Amen. Happy, Happy Easter, St. Andrews. Andrews. Happy, Happy Easter, St. Michael's. Michael's.
Happy Easter! Good morning, it's nice to see you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone! Stay well! Happy Easter! And enjoy the flowers! Happy Easter! Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! I hope you have a good Easter! Happy Easter! Welcome, happy morning, each to each shall say. Hail to these vanquished, have one to 